start. Hi class. I'm going to take a little time now at the whiteboard to explain to you how to do arrow formalism with acids and bases. Um, so um, there are three cases that you're going to have to deal with. The first case is acids. You could either have a carboxylic acid like this one or a phenol, as I mentioned in class. Let me fix that a little bit. Okay. If you had a carboxylic acid or a phenol in your organic mixture, you could, in principle, extract them out using sodium hydroxide. And when I say sodium hydroxide, I'm talking about aqueous sodium hydroxide. So, if you had an equation such as this, where it said sodium hydroxide, you would break it up and write sodium plus hydroxide minus. I'm putting all the lone pairs in on the hydroxide. It has three lone pairs. Now, most of chemistry is negative being attracted to positive. This oxygen is really negative, okay? It has a full negative charge. This is an ionic interaction. This hydrogen is very delta plus because it is attached to an oxygen, which is delta minus. This oxygen will be attracted to that hydrogen. The arrow you draw represents the attack of the oxygen and its corresponding lone pair on the hydrogen. Since hydrogen can only have one bond, when it makes the bond with the oxygen, it has to release the bond between the oxygen and the hydrogen. So this bond represents this pair of electrons being given back to the oxygen. Similarly, I could write a mechanism in this case where this oxygen would attack this hydrogen and these electrons would come in. I'm going to leave that for you to figure out because that's in your problem set. But this hydrogen is delta plus and this oxygen can handle negative charge pretty well because of resonance. Now, finishing the top problem, what are the results? The results of this are that the oxygen in the carboxylic group now has the electrons and handle, has a negative charge, and the hydroxide is now water. And that's why everyone in class kept saying all week, an acid plus a base gives us salt plus water. Why is this a salt? Well, sodium is the counter ion in this reaction. It's the spectator ion. And sodium is the counterpart for this anion. All reactions need to be electrically neutral. That means the charge on one side has to equal the charge on the other side. And the charge has to be zero overall. Okay, um, This oxygen holds the negative charge better because of resonance. You've probably learned a little bit about that in class. All right. Now, what do these mechanisms really show? This is what they really show. But the arrows are a little misleading or a little confusing for people in the beginning. What they show is a negative species like this OH is actually colliding with this hydrogen. It's coming in and hitting that, that hydrogen. It's not like the electrons are leaping off, okay? So what's happening is this oxygen is forming a bond with that hydrogen. And then this bond between the O and the H are breaking, is breaking, okay? So the way we depict this is we say these electrons are coming into this hydrogen and these electrons are sliding toward the other oxygen that can handle the charge better. There's no resonance here, there's going to be resonance here. Okay? The second case you have to deal with are bases. And as I said in class, amines are bases. Okay? So supposing we have R NH2. This is a typical amine. 
I'm drawing general structures because of um, because this group doesn't really matter. This could be a whole slew of different organic groups. This is the part that matters. Now, amines are derivatives of ammonia, okay? And you learned in general chemistry or introductory chemistry that ammonia was a weak base, but it acted like a base, okay? So, in fact, I would say ammonia was probably your prototype for all weak bases. Why was it a base? It was a base because it has a lone pair on it, and the nitrogen is electron-rich, so it's able to donate electron density to other molecules. All bases are either negatively charged or delta-minus. All acids are positively charged or delta-plus. That's one of the basic principles of organic chemistry. Now, this is a substituted ammonia molecule, so it has an R group in place of a hydrogen. In it's very typical to have a problem where you're given hydronium ion. Realize hydronium ion is made from taking something like HCl and adding water to it. Okay? You learned about this already. You know this from introductory chemistry. If you take HCl and water, you get hydronium ion. Of course, there's a counter ion for this charge because, as I said, Systems have to be electrically neutral. You can't just have a charge hanging out there by itself. So what is the um, counter ion for this? It's chloride. Okay? It may not be written in. You shouldn't panic if it's not written in in a problem. So if I had a base in an organic mixture and I wanted to separate it out, I could add aqueous acid, which would be hydronium ion. The only acid you can have in water is hydronium ion. The only base you can have in water is hydroxide. Okay? So, what will happen? These hydrogens are delta plus. You may not think they're delta plus because the positive charge is written on the oxygen as a bookkeeping charge, but these hydrogens are really more delta plus than the oxygen. They're more electropositive. So, the positive is on the hydrogen. So, this electron rich nitrogen is going to attack the hydrogen, and this bond between the hydrogen and oxygen is going to break toward the oxygen. Okay, so what is the result of that? The result is your arrow formalism should tell a story, and the story is that this hydrogen bonded with that lone pair, so now that hydrogen's on the lone pair, and once again, what have we made? Water. You don't always make water, but you often make water. This has... Um, a plus charge now, but the delta plus is actually on these H's. This is the conjugate acid of this base, okay? This is the conjugate base of this acid, okay? Base plus acid gave salt plus water. What is the counterion for this? The counterion is chloride, okay? So it is a salt. Everything's electrically neutral. Now, Finally, you need to know about molecules that are neutral. And this is an example of a neutral molecule. I'm just using it. It's kind of extreme, but it gets the point across. Okay, this is something called anthracene. It's a big, giant, aromatic molecule. This molecule is neutral, which means... It doesn't have any obvious base group or obvious acid group. So this means it cannot be extracted out with acid. It cannot be extracted out with base. It would be essentially left behind in an extraction process. If you reacted this, for example, with hydronium ion, you would say no reaction because there's no lone pairs for this to react with. Okay. So I want you to keep this in mind when you're doing your problems and for the future and for your setup for lab five. Okay, so I hope this helps and I'll see you in class next week.